Alan Garner, Wikipedia article audio. Alan Garner OBE is an English novelist best known for his children's fantasy novels and his retellings of traditional British folk tales. Much of his work is firmly rooted in the landscape, history, and folklore of his native county of Cheshire, northwest England, being set in the region and making use of the native Cheshire dialect. Born in Congleton, Garner grew up around the nearby town of Alderley Edge, and spent much of his youth in the wooded area known locally as the Edge, where he gained an early interest in the folklore of the region. Studying at Manchester Grammar School and then briefly at Oxford University, in 1957 he moved to the nearby village of Blackburn, where he bought and renovated an early modern building known as Toad Hall. His first novel, The Weird Stone of Breezing Amen, was published in 1960. A children's fantasy novel set on the edge, it incorporated elements of local folklore in its plot and characters. Garner completed a sequel, The Moon of Gamrath, but left the third book of the trilogy he had envisioned. Instead he produced a string of further fantasy novels, Elider, The Owl Service and Red Shift. Biography Early Life, 1934-56 Turning away from fantasy as a genre, Garner produced the Stone Book Quartet, a series of four short novellas detailing a day in the life of four generations of his family. He also published a series of British folk tales which he had rewritten in a series of books entitled Alan Garner's Fairy Tales of Gold, Alan Garner's Book of British Fairy Tales and A Bag of Moonshine. In his subsequent novels, Strand Loper and Thursday Bitch, he continued writing tales revolving around Cheshire, although without the fantasy elements which had characterized his earlier work. In 2012, he finally published a third book in the Weird Stone trilogy, Boneland. Garner was born in the front room of his grandmother's house in Congleton, Cheshire on October 17, 1934. He grew up nearby, in Alderley Edge, a well-to-do village that had effectively become a suburb of Manchester. His rural working-class family, had been connected to Alderley Edge since at least the 16th century, and could be traced back to the death of William Garner in 1592. Garner claims that his family had passed on a genuine oral tradition involving folk tales about the edge, which included a description of a king and his army of knights who slept under it, guarded by a wizard. In the mid-19th century Alan's great-great-grandfather Robert had carved the face of a bearded wizard onto the face of a cliff next to a well, known locally at that time as the Wizard's Well. Robert Garner and his other relatives had all been craftsmen, and, according to Garner, each successive generation had tried to improve on, or do something different from, the previous generation. Garner's grandfather, Joseph Garner, could read but didn't and so was virtually unlettered. Instead he taught his grandson the folk tales he knew about the edge. Garner later remarked that as a result he was aware of magic as a child, and he and his friends often played there. The story of the king and the wizard living under the hill played an important part in his life, becoming, he explained, deeply embedded in my psyche and heavily influencing his later novels. Garner faced several life-threatening childhood illnesses, which left him bedridden for much of the time. He went to a local village school, where he found that, despite being praised for his intelligence, he was punished for speaking in his native Cheshire dialect, for instance, when he was six his primary school teacher washed his mouth out with soapy water. Garner then won a place at Manchester Grammar School, where he received his secondary education, 
entry was means tested, resulting in his school fees being waived. Rather than focusing his interest on creative writing, it was here that he excelled at sprinting. He used to go jogging along the highway, and later claimed that in doing so he was sometimes accompanied by the mathematician Alan Turing, who shared his fascination with the Disney film Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Garner was then conscripted into national service serving for a time with the Royal Artillery while posted to Woolwich in southeast London. At school, Garner had developed a keen interest in the work of Aeschylus and Homer, as well as the ancient Greek language. Thus, he decided to pursue the study of classics at Magdalen College, Oxford, passing his entrance exams in January 1953 at the time he had thoughts of becoming a professional academic. He was the first member of his family to receive anything more than a basic education, and he noted that this removed him from his cultural background and led to something of a schism with other members of his family, who could not cope with me, and I could not cope with them. Looking back, he remarked, I soon learned that it was not a good idea to come home excited over irregular verbs. In 1955, he joined the University Theatrical Society, playing the role of Mark Antony in a performance of William Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra where he co starred alongside Dudley Moore and where Kenneth Baker was the stage manager. In August 1956, he decided that he wished to devote himself to novel writing, and decided to abandon his university education without taking a degree, he left Oxford in late 1956. He nevertheless felt that the academic rigor which he learned during his university studies has remained a permanent strength through all my life. The Weird Stone of Breezing Amen and the Moon of Gamrath 1957-64 Aged 22, Garner was out cycling when he came across a hand-painted sign announcing that an agricultural cottage in Toad Hall a late medieval building situated in Blackburn, seven miles from Alderley Edge was on sale for £510. Although he personally could not afford it, he was lent the money by the local Odd Fellow Lodge, enabling him to purchase and move into the cottage in June 1957. In the late 19th century the hall had been divided into two agricultural laborers' cottages, but Garner was able to purchase the second for £150 about a year later, he proceeded to knock down the dividing walls and convert both halves back into a single home. Garner had begun writing his first novel, the Weird Stone of Breezing Amen, A Tale of Alderley, in September 1956. However it was while at Toad Hall that he finished the book. Set in Alderley Edge, it revolved around two children, Susan and Colin, who are sent to live in the area with their mother's old nursemaid, Bess, and her husband, Gowther Mossack. Setting about to explore the edge, they discover a race of malevolent creatures, the Svart Alfar, who dwell in the edge's abandoned mines and who seem intent on capturing them, until they are rescued by the wizard Cadellan who reveals that the forces of darkness are massing at the edge in search of the eponymous weird stone of breezing Amen. Whilst engaged in writing in his spare time, Garner attempted to gain employment as a teacher, but soon gave that up believing that I couldn't write and teach, the energies were too similar, and so began working as a general laborer for four years, remaining unemployed for much of that time. Elider, The Owl Service and Red Shift, 1964-73 Garner sent his debut novel to the publishing company Collins, where it was picked up by the company's head, Sir William Collins, who was on the lookout for new fantasy novels following on from the recent commercial and critical success of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. 
Garner, who went on to become a personal friend of Collins, would later relate that Billy Collins saw a title with funny-looking words in it on the stockpile, and he decided to publish it. On its release in 1960, The Weird Stone of Breezing Amen proved to be a critical and commercial success, later being described as a tour de force of the imagination, a novel that showed almost every writer who came afterwards what it was possible to achieve in novels ostensibly published for children. Garner himself however would later denounce this novel as a fairly bad book in 1968. With his first book published, Garner abandoned his work as a laborer and gained a job as a freelance television reporter, living a hand-to-mouth lifestyle on a shoestring budget. He also worked on a sequel to The Weird Stone of Breezing Amen, which would be known as The Moon of Gamrath. The Moon of Gamrath also revolves around the adventures of Colin and Susan, with the latter being possessed by a malevolent creature called the Brolican who has recently entered the world. With the help of the wizard Cadellan, the Brolican is exorcised, but Susan's soul also leaves her body, being sent to another dimension, leading Colin to find a way to bring it back. Critic Neil Philip characterized it as an artistic advance but a less satisfying story. In a 1989 interview, Garner stated that he had left scope for a third book following the adventures of Colin and Susan, envisioning a trilogy, but that he had intentionally decided not to write it, instead moving on to write something different. However Boneland, the conclusion to the sequence, was belatedly published in August 2012. In 1962 Garner began work on a radio play named Elider, which would result in the completion of a novel of the same name. Set in contemporary Manchester, Elider tells the story of four children who enter into a derelict Victorian church, in which they find a portal to the magical realm of Elider. Here, they are entrusted by King Maelbron to help rescue four treasures which have been stolen by the forces of evil who are attempting to take control of the kingdom. Successfully doing so, the children return to Manchester with the treasures, but are pursued by the malevolent forces who need them to seal their victory. The Stone Book Series and Folkloric Collections, 1974-94 before writing a lighter, Garner had seen a dinner service set which could be arranged to make pictures of either flowers or owls. Inspired by this design, he produced his fourth novel, The Owl Service. The story was also heavily influenced by the medieval Welsh tale of Math Fab Mothan Y from, The Mabinagian. The Owl Service was critically acclaimed winning both the Carnegie Medal and Guardian Children's Fiction Prize. It also sparked discussions among critics as to whether Garner should properly be considered a children's writer, given that this book in particular was deemed equally suitable for an adult readership. Strand Loper, Thursday Bitch, and Boneland, 1995 present. It took Garner six years to write his next novel, Red Shift. In this, he provided three intertwined love stories, one set in the present, another during the English Civil War, and the third in the second century CE. Philip referred to it as a complex book but not a complicated one, the bare lines of story and emotion stand clear. Academic specialist in children's literature Maria Nikolajva characterized Red Shift as a difficult book for an unprepared reader, identifying its main themes as those of loneliness and failure to communicate. Ultimately, she thought that repeated rereadings of the novel bring about the realization that it is a perfectly realistic story with much more depth and psychologically more credible than the most so-called realistic juvenile novels. Personal Life 
From 1976 to 1978, Garner published a series of four novellas, which have come to be collectively known as the Stone Book Quartet, The Stone Book, Granny Riardun, The Amayor Gate, and Tom Fobble's Day. Each focused on a day in the life of a child in the Garner family, each from a different generation. In a 1989 interview, Garner noted that although writing the Stone Book Quartet had been exhausting, it had been the most rewarding of everything he'd done to date. Philip described the quartet as a complete command of the material he had been working and reworking since the start of his career. Garner pays particular attention to language, and strives to render the cadence of the Cheshire tongue in modern English. This he explains by the sense of anger he felt on reading Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, the footnotes would not have been needed by his father. In 1981, the literary critic Neil Philip published an analysis of Garner's novels as a fine anger, which was based on his doctoral thesis, produced for the University of London in 1980. In this study he noted that the Stone Book Quartet marks a watershed in Garna's writing career, and provides a suitable moment for an evaluation of his work thus far. Literary Style In 1996, Garna's novel Strand Loper was published. His collection of essays and public talks, The Voice That Thunders, contains much autobiographical material, as well as critical reflection upon folklore and language, literature and education, the nature of myth and time. In The Voice That Thunders he reveals the commercial pressure placed upon him during the decade-long drought which preceded Strand Loper to forsake literature, and become instead a popular writer, cashing in on my established name by producing sequels to, and making series of, the earlier books. Garner feared that making series, would render sterile the existing work, the life that produced it, and bring about my artistic and spiritual death and felt unable to comply. Garner's novel, Thursday Bitch, was published in 2003. Garner's novel, Boneland, was published in 2012 nominally completing a trilogy begun some fifty years earlier with the weird stone of breezing Amen. With his first wife Anne Cook he had three children. In 1972 he married for a second time, this time to Griselda Greaves, a teacher and critic with whom he had two children. In a 2014 interview conducted with Mike Pitts for British Archaeology magazine, Garner stated that I don't have anything to do with the literary world. I avoid writers. I don't like them. Most of my close personal friends are professional archaeologists. Although Garner's early work is often labeled as children's literature, Garner himself rejects such a description, informing one interviewer that I certainly have never written for children but that instead he has always written purely for himself. Neil Philip, in his critical study of Garner's work, commented that up till that point, everything Alan Garner has published has been published for children, although he went on to relate that it may be that Garner's is a case where the division between children's and adults' literature is meaningless and that his fiction is instead enjoyed by a type of person, no matter what their age. Philip offered the opinion that the essence of his work was the struggle to render the complex in simple, bare terms, to couch the abstract in the concrete and communicate it directly to the reader. He added that Garna's work is intensely autobiographical, in both obvious and subtle ways. Highlighting Garna's use of mythological and folkloric sources, Philip stated that his work explores the disjointed and troubled psychological and emotional landscape of the 20th century through the symbolism of myth and folklore. 
he also expressed the opinion that time is Garna's most consistent theme. Recognition and Legacy The English author and academic Charles Butler noted that Garner was attentive to the geological, archaeological, and cultural history of his settings, and careful to integrate his fiction with the physical reality beyond the page. As a part of this, Garner had included maps of Alderley Edge in both the Weird Stone of Breezing Amen and the Moon of Gamrath. Garner has spent much time investigating the areas that he deals with in his books, writing in the Times Literary Supplement in 1968, Garner commented that in preparation for writing his book Elider. Awards In a paper published in the Children's Literature Association Quarterly, Maria Nikolajva characterized Garner as one of the most controversial authors of modern children's literature. The Owl Service won both the Carnegie Medal and the Guardian Children's Fiction Prize, for the 70th anniversary of the Carnegie in 2007 it was named one of the top 10 medal-winning works, selected by a panel to compose the ballot for a public election of the all-time favorite. The Weird Stone of Breezing Amen was named to the Lewis Carroll Shelf Award list by the University of Wisconsin-Madison School of Education in 1970, denoting that it belongs on the same shelf with the 1865 classic Alice. In Wonderland and its sequel, The Stone Book, first in the Stone Book series, won the 1996 Phoenix Award as the best English-language children's book that did not win a major award when it was originally published 20 years earlier. The 1981 film Images won first prize at the Chicago International Film Festival. In the 50th anniversary edition of The Weird Stone of Breezing Amen, published by HarperCollins in 2010, Several notable British fantasy novelists praised Garner and his work. Susan Cooper related that the power and range of Alan Garner's astounding talent has grown with every book he's written, whilst David Amond called him one of Britain's greatest writers whose works really matter. Philip Pullman, the author of the His Dark Materials trilogy, went further when he remarked that Another British fantasy writer, Neil Gaiman, claimed that Garner's fiction is something special in that it was smart and challenging, based in the here and the now, in which real English places emerged from the shadows of folklore, and in which people found themselves walking, living, and battling their way through the dreams and patterns of myth. Praise also came from Nick Lake the editorial director of HarperCollins Children's Books, who proclaimed that Garner is, quite simply, one of the greatest and most influential writers this country has ever produced. The biennial Hans Christian Andersen Award conferred by the International Board on Books for Young People is the highest recognition available to a writer or illustrator of children's books. Garner was the sole runner-up for the Writing Award in 1978. Television and Radio Adaptations Works Novels Short Story Collections Garner was appointed Officer of the Order of the British Empire for Services to Literature in the 2001 New Year's Honours List. He received the British Fantasy Society's Occasional Carl Edward Wagner Award in 2003 and the World Fantasy Award for Life Achievement in 2012. In January 2011, the University of Warwick awarded the degree of Doctor of Letters. On that occasion he gave a half-hour interview about his work. He has been recognized several times for particular works. Other books Footnotes Sources